Closed loop chiller flush best practices. So we've got a closed loop. We want to flush the, the loop out uh, for whatever reason. So there's, there's two kind of lines of thought that comes to mind with this. Um, one is, we, let's say we want, we want to do some kind of strain or flush, or we want to, um, maybe there's a low spot in the loop somewhere, okay? And we want to flush out that low spot for some reason. Uh, maybe we've got like, a, in some loops I've seen it to where there'll be certain areas that kind of collect sediment more so than other areas just to because of how it kind of makes a trap where it's at, right? And it's somewhat due to poor piping. Usually it's been my experience. Either way, you want to do a flush. One of, one of the things I will say with closed loop, we want to be very, very careful with flushing, how much we flush and when we do so, specifically because of the chemical treatment in there. It is very important that our closed loops be chemically treated and that they've got, uh, what do they call them, uh, D, is it deionizing or deironizing? Uh, they've, I'm not a chemist in the chemical treatment side of things. The point is there are certain additives that they put in the loop, and that's one reason why it looks pink sometimes, or at least most of the loops in my area, that's the color they would turn, uh, is because you have... Um, uh, those additives in there are preventing things like rust on the internals of the pipes. That's one of the things that'll happen. So we want to be very careful when we're doing any kind of flushing or if we're opening up a closed loop that the either the facility we're working at is aware or their chemical team or if we're working directly with a chemical company, because uh, I've done that too in the field where we actually brought a the chemical with us or a chemical company in the in in and we manage them directly as part of our contract with that facility the facility themselves did not manage chemical treatment however it is that um you're set up you want to make sure that those that team is involved because whatever water you take out that's going to uh, cause fluctuations in that chemical treatment which if you're not careful can have severe side effects with erosion on the piping and that'll also have a huge impact on that water's ability to, to actually transfer heat and such has been my experience and i'll get into a story on that in a second so um yes with flushing if you're going to do a flush if you're say you're flushing a strainer so i'm not a huge fan of flushing strainers i know it's a it's a known or let's call it common to some people practice. Uh, I, I personally have found that if a strainer is, it, I will open the drain port on the strainer or the flush port to check to see how much comes out. And that'll kind of give me an indication on how bad the strainer may be. But I personally have not seen where say flushing a strainer is an effective way of routine maintenance. If it needs to be cleaned, it needs to be pulled and cleaned is my personal opinion. That's also just given the context of the plants that I've worked in and the type of debris that I deal with. That may be different in other areas who have different climates. I don't know. I only know my region that it wasn't the most effective thing. We get a lot of leaves. We get a lot of heavy sediment and mud. Um, so because of that, I... Um, I just, I'm not a fan of flushing a strainer. Okay. Now, if we, if you have to flush, just be very cognizant of, or mindful of the, um, of the amount you're trying to minimize it as much as possible. And I like to flush from the top down if I'm going to do a loop flush. So let's scale into that. I've had scenarios where we had a closed loop. Uh, the loop was not treated, was not taken care of, and in one particular case, it had completely uh, filled with um, uh, basically iron, right? It looked like rust, like the water looked like liquid rust. It was so dense. And, you know, it was because the it, because of the lack of treatment, it had ionized and was full of basically iron particles and, and a rust particle from the way I understand it. And it was heavily impacting that chiller's ability to exchange heat correctly, which 
Uh, we were actually, how we found this was we were getting ready to change this chiller and we started opening some stuff up and we found the, the condition of the water. It's like, holy cow. So in a scenario like that, uh, we drained the loop. And we started at the top, opened up some air valves, let the whole loop drain out because we wanted to start with fresh water and we also wanted to get chemical treatment in that water this time as well. So that, that's exactly what that process looked like, just a complete top to bottom drain. Uh, we didn't do any flushing or anything we could have. So if I was to have actually flushed that loop from there, um, what I might have, there's a couple of ways that I personally would have thought to approach it. Um, one, we could open the bypass on the makeup assembly and let it, flush and drain down that way now most of the time your makeup is going to be on the return or the suction side of your uh, pump piping so it's going to be pulling back so if you just open the bypass on your makeup water assembly then that's just going to put water basically down that one pipe passive path of least resistance um so i would end up I'd, I'd probably flush that side of it for a little bit and then close a valve somewhere uh to allow that water to then pressurized back into the the supply side that would technically be coming out of the chiller going back to the air handlers um, and I would flush down that way that'd be one way the way I would probably go about it though is I would probably pressurize the loop uh, so I'd drain it down like I discussed pressurize it maybe even get it circulating for a few minutes and let that water flow and pick up as much sediment and debris whatever is in there as I can and then um, open that valve back up and let it flush back out. And it would be another top to bottom flush. So you, to do a clean flush like that, you have to open ports up at the top of the loop. That way air can properly come in and things can flow in a downward direction and then draining it down at the bottom. Uh, now that's going to depend on, you know, you've got to figure out your drainage situation, whether that's, you know, to ground or to a drain or whatever that looks like and depending on your chemical treatment so be be careful of this depending on what is in your loop you may have regulations in your area where you can't just drain to um to a drain or something right or at least not that much quantity uh so that's a pretty severe one all right you're talking about a whole loop flush which unless you've got a scenario like i described where the whole loop is severely ionized it, that's a that, that only had that happen that one time now i've had some really dirty loops and when you're doing a, a commissioning startup on a closed loop you're going to have a lot of construction debris that's where your strainers come in and you can actually put um, startup strainers and such in on on some of these and even some of them actually come with it where the new install they'll actually have a temporary strainer that's um on the 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 strainer itself that basically you'll use that during the first little bit of startup uh that may be the first month first two months whatever it is you'll have that that startup strainer which will be a, a finer mesh that'll collect a lot of the just general construction debris and then you can remove that use a regular strainer from there because that startup strainer is just too fine for normal operation without having to clean that strainer all the time so um that would be like using strainers to capture a lot of the, the sediment or debris, whatever it is, would be a, a, a more common way to go about it without having to flush the loop. So um, anyway, in terms of flushing, be very mindful of your chemical treatment. Don't throw that out of whack. And if you like, always have your chemical company involved in that process, please. Um, and then if you do have to do an actual flush, like then I'm, I'm going to say we've probably got a pretty severe scenario. There's, there's some of these cases where they can put some chemical treatment in there and it will actually um, stabilize that water in a way to where you don't have to do a flush. That's my understanding, at least, you know, talking to some of these guys where there are certain things they can do that will help, say, allow a lot of that heavy sediment that may get in the water to settle because of the chemical additives they put in. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it, right? Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've, I've committed, I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow 
and help this industry take step f- steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's where I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can, uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, y'all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given. 